This episode of the podcast is supported by Bentley Lewis, an award-winning executive search firm. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. We are proud to be official media partners of Dive In Festival this year, which is really cool. And we're doing a series of podcasts for the festival. And if you don't know, Dive In Festival is a global movement in the insurance sector, which is supporting the development of inclusive work place cultures so really really cool work they're in about 33 countries now so they do these really cool events panel discussions uh, all over the world really helping to promote diversity and inclusion which is very cool i hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy awesome i'm alive um thank you everyone for joining um we're doing our final podcast for the dive in festival with the wonderful Catherine Conway, uh, Head of DNI and Community Affairs at Aeon. Thank you so much for joining. Um, just before we start, for those that don't know, Dive In Festival is um, uh, involved in promoting work pl- inclusive workplace cultures. I've said that about five million times and I can't even get it right now, um, around the world. And given what's going on at the moment, it's all virtual and they've managed to expand it to, to loads and loads of countries. So it's really cool. So if you haven't watched any of the events yet, please do. I think you can find the replays on their website. So, Catherine, thank you so Hi. much for joining me. How are you doing? Yeah, no problem. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, Good. getting used to lockdown. Well, I am obviously used to <laughs> lockdown, but just thinking yeah. that that's going to last a little bit longer now. I know. It just felt like it felt like we were, we were easing up. And, and so in the city of London, I saw more and more people start to come in. And, and now, and we're speaking on the 23rd of September, the, the UK um, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced that we're going into slightly tighter lockdown now. Yeah, and very strange that not that long ago, they were encouraging people back into the workplace to try and get the economy going. And now actually we've been encouraged again to all still work from home. Um, so yeah, it just feels like this is going to go on for a little bit longer. I know. I thought I would. I I, I swore it would be over by May, completely. <laughs> I, did, I did get the year on uh, yeah. in the end, probably. But how have you? Yeah. How have you? How have you found it all? So. I've actually found it okay. So because I have a strange work-life balance, I live in the north of England um, and I work out of the Leadenhall building in the centre of London. So I've all, I've tended to do a sort of three, four day a week in London, staying over when I'm in London. So, But I've always really enjoyed working at least one day a week from home and I've travelled quite a lot. So it's been a massive change for me being able to work from home all the time. Um, during lockdown, um, sadly, my personal life has changed quite a lot, and I've separated from my husband of many, many, many years. And I'm now, and I've moved house, so I'm living alone. So that's unusual as well for me. So, but I'm really getting used to it. Um, what I am finding difficult is the blurred lines between life and work, and how many hours I'm working and how many hours I'm relaxing. So that's been quite so, tricky to manage. So you're finding you're working more now than you were before? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Even though I was super busy before and even on the commute between Yorkshire and London, um, you know, I'd always be working on the train and that sort of thing. But yes, it's it's busier and it's intense. You know, we're talking to people all day, every day, you know, but by virtual means which you know is always video for me always I'm just on the video all day and it's in it's intense it's draining it's really draining I read an article by a psychiatrist I can't remember who it was and she said that the feeling you get after a video call is similar is similar to 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 morning almost because you're you're like subconsciously like wishing you're actually in front of that person (laughs) <laughs> real, in real life. Yeah, really yeah well I guess so I guess so I just I just think that it takes so much more concentration than if you were in a room yeah um yeah. you know you've always got to be aware of who else is on and making sure everyone can has got time to speak up and make sure you're including everyone but I also find that you're all always doing a five to ten minute check-in at the start of every meeting how are you doing how are you feeling yeah. how's it going how are the kids how's the dog you know and actually then um which is great i mean for me i'm all about inclusion yeah. you know we've never had enough of these conversations in the workplace for me but then you know that that also takes up time so yeah it, it it's intense i'm not sure i'd say it's like morning 
I find a <laughs> sense of sort of relief, but what tends to happen is, yeah. you know, you sort of take a deep breath and then you're dialing into the next one. Yeah, but it is tiring. I mean, you can't do yeah. so many in a day. I mean, for, for me, and I love, I'm, I'm, I'm quite extrovert and I, and I just get a lot of energy from meeting someone face to face and yeah. you come out energized and the whole thing. And with the video, although I, I do enjoy it and it's going to be one of the things I'm always, it's like, it's, it's here to stay uh, yes. and I'm comfortable doing it. Um, I don't, it's just a find, you know, hopefully there's, there's going to be a nice balance at some point where you can meet people, you can do the video, you can do the telephone calls and, you know, a little bit of a, of a mix of all of it, I think. I think that seems to be everyone's sort of wish is that they can have a bit of everything. I think there's been some real benefits from working from home. Um, you know, I had a, a leader say to me recently how he's so much enjoyed having dinner with his teenage kids every single night, you know, and now they've gone back to university or school and it's slightly different. But actually, he said in sort of 25 years of working, that has never, ever happened. He's never been able to spend that much time with his kids. Yeah. So. I think there's some real benefits in that and that the the way that people have realized that actually we can all work from home and get the job done and we don't just sit on the on the sofa watching daytime TV all day is a <laughs> is a big change. Um True. but I think we do need that mix. I think it be it would be great to go back into the office, but I think people are hankering after the office environment how it used to be. And I yeah. think going back into I mean, I haven't been, I've no idea what it would feel like, but certainly very different now. I guess if you're sitting on your floor of, I don't know how many, 350 people and you're yeah. anyone there, I mean, you know, yes. it's not so fun. You're like, please come, yeah. please come. <laughs> um, Lucy, what do you think? I think before this lockdown, you know, there was a lot of a lot of discussion around working from home and you know, getting companies to be flexible, um, getting them to, to let their people work from. Do you think now Mother Nature told us to stay at home and it's kind of, you know, everyone's submersed in it. It's what people thought it would be pre. Yeah, I think that's that's a great point, isn't it? I think Mother Nature told us told the world to take a pause, I have to say. I really think if you think about where we were going with climate, with oh, with politics, with everything, everyone just needed to take a bit of a, a chill. Um <laughs> yeah. you know, I think that it and for that for that I think it's um it has been really beneficial. For us at Aon, we moved into the Lednall building um, in 2015. And we we went on a journey of, of a whole different way of working. Prior to us moving into that building, we'd been in about four different buildings in the centre of London. So to bring us all together, uh, we, and we had to adopt a new way of working. So we, we modelled agile working and we worked on that which meant that people could work from wherever. Everyone had the technology, the laptops, the mobiles. Great. Some people were much better at it than others. Some people very much still like, you know, we. Um, you could sit at any desk, you could sit on a sofa, you could sit in the cafe and work. Um, and we tried not to encourage people to sit at the same desk every day so that they could meet new people and move around, be flexible. But there were still teams who very much liked to work in their, you know, set sort of team. And, and you, yes, it was great because you could, you know, go for a doctor's appointment or leave early to go and watch the school sports day or whatever. But that was sort of, as far as it goes, some of our teams worked from home, you know, they, they, were in, they had to work from home one or two days a week. So that was great. But there was still teams who weren't fully embracing it so I think that this has been a great opportunity to practice shall we say I yeah. mean we wouldn't have wished this on anyone but um it's certainly given us a massive step change yeah hugely and and, and just kind of on the DNI aspect and maybe just the inclusion aspect sure how have you how have you guys adapted to it and to make people feel really included part of teams decision making these kinds of things yeah, and that that obviously has been really difficult. Um, we focused to start with hugely on well-being. We recognised that there would be people who felt massively isolated, um, you know, living on their own and not seeing anyone and people who suffered from anxiety or any other mental health condition, you know, would find it really challenging. So we really focused on 
raising awareness of all of the support services that we had available. We've got mental health first aiders, our EAP, our private health care, all of those things. But also we did a lot of um, work with our managers to sort of spot the signs of people struggling and also encouraging people to say, you know, use your own initiative in terms of when you can work. You know, we had parents trying to both homework and look after the kids and right. some would work at the first part of the day from like 6 a.m to 1 p.m and then they'd swap and then you know but we were saying just just go with go with it go with the flow so that was our main focus but also encouraging everyone to just check in with their colleagues and yeah. make sure and think oh i haven't heard from so and so for a while you know, I wonder if they're okay or or notice when people's videos were off a lot or when they didn't contribute in meetings, you know, and we all had to just be so much better at that. Yeah. What was the norm? People with their videos on or off? No. So we encourage, <laughs> that's a really great question because at the beginning we encouraged people to switch them on because it was like, you know, we need to see each other. Um, yeah. But then recognise that you could definitely get some video fatigue and yeah. that sometimes and i think also we didn't realize but there were some people particularly the younger generation who live in london you know rents are so high they were in shared shared accommodation where actually they didn't even have a space to work yeah so they were working from their beds and you know so switching videos on i want to show you, you know can be quite yeah quite, people felt quite not embarrassed the other thing is we found that some people didn't really have great internet connections at home because they came into the office every day and yeah. it's expensive yeah right so if you if you live on your own or you you know you're a young graduate and you live with your family and you know so there were all sorts of challenges that we had to overcome. it's really true that and also if you are speaking to someone with bad internet connection you still you still are you know rolling your eyes back aren't you kind of subconscious a little oh, bit really? judging a little bit like yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah and they'd say oh you know my video connect my internet my video is off because my internet's connection bad is bad but it's just allowing people to do that because you the other thing is you know we're seeing into everyone's homes and we're seeing their pets and their dogs and their partners and their kids yeah. which is really cool and i think it's helped us all what I say lower the waterline you know get to understand people a little bit more yeah. but obviously there'll be certain things about people and their home style their life the places where they live that they just really didn't want to share with their work colleagues and we yeah. have to appreciate that right Abs yeah, absolutely yeah. definitely it has felt that uh, to your point it's everyone's got a bit more human now because you yeah. get you come into work with this facade you know you put you put your certainly in, in, in the insurance industry, you know, yeah. pretty much, and it's been relaxing a bit. But you put your seat and tie on. Um, ties got relaxed a lot over the last five yeah. years or whatever, but still, it's you know, you've got to be not looking annoyed. smart, um, <laughs> not in Lloyd's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, but actually, I think even Lloyd's has scrapped their tie now, but wow. um, yeah, but but I think, um, but it's still certainly smart cash, you know, in the city, definitely. Um, but then it's really at home. I mean, it's a bit strange if you if you're doing a video call with someone at home and they're wearing a suit and tie. Uh, so yeah, that would be a little odd, wouldn't it? But but that but that's right. Again, we only saw we could only judge people, and you know everyone was in smart dress. You know, the women had their makeup on, the men had their thing going on, and again, you know, we just didn't understand the person behind the the smart dress and the attire, and you go to work and you you know you put your work head on don't you you might have so much going on at home you know one of your family might be ill you might be had a really bad argument with your partner or whatever it was or you might have a, a you know a caring responsibility that that no one knows about or you're trying to keep something quiet but you put your work head on and you walk in and and that's you set for the day you're in work mode yeah. very rarely did we allow our home lives and our personal issues to come into the workplace with us oh, and yeah. even though we talked about you know for so long about being able to be authentic and be open how many times do people actually ask you know and, and you get that are you okay how are you today how was your weekend they don't really want to know the answer do they they just want you to go yeah fine thanks yeah good yeah great yeah, you, you don't, you're not gonna say oh the kids were ill or you know this was a nightmare or you know and but now and I love that fact. I think for inclusion, and obviously everything yeah. that's going on around COVID, 
you know, we're thinking more of our neighbours and treating people with respect and the whole thing about the NHS. And, you know, why did we never, ever respect the NHS and love them as much as we do now? I mean, that's sad. So I, I, I think that we've all got in touch more with our caring, sharing selves, which for yeah. me is fantastic. Yeah, the, the, the kindness thing, which, which people yeah. are talking about a lot. You know, mm. and definitely my, my wife's been working in intensive care with COVID patients mm. the whole way through through the wow. lockdown. So it's been it's been quite interesting because she she was going into work because remember, we're talking about this work from home stuff. I think you have to appreciate if you're lucky enough to do a job, which you can do at home. Because yeah. you know, you've got to think like, you know, so NHS workers, um, Amazon delivery um, the yeah, dustbin men, the yeah, patient, yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people that were keeping the country together are out you know yeah. and having to having to go out so supermarket workers imagine those in those early days wow yeah, yeah terrifying. I mean, terrifying. They, were, they were super super busy so so you know with all of this like I think you're going to have to put your yourself in in the context of wow I'm lucky that I can I can choose where yeah. I want to work and stuff which I think is great and yeah and I think it's I think it's I know it's been hopefully eye-opening for many people um and a lot of, I think, good stuff and good working practice will co- practices will come from it. Yeah, I hope so. I truly think it will. I think it's going to be a huge shift. And, you know, firms are going to think, why do they need so much office space? And, you know, how do we work together? And there might just be one day a week when actually you all get together with your team. And it's much more of a, a creative, innovative, you know, sort of process. And, and we yeah. do that. Um, but I think it's going to also, though, allow people to to talk about how they work best and to make it work for them. Um, yeah. You know, I think that's fantastic, and it's going to open so many more opportunities for people. I think I think so. I think the caveat I would say is, um, I mean, everyone I speak to is talking about taking less office space. So I think that's that's for sure. I think on on how you like to work or how you think you're most productive. I think. You know, if you think about people entering the workforce right now and you talked about younger people, mm. I don't think you quite know yet, you know, how how you're most productive. And I think, you know, the danger is, you know, I speak to I speak to some some very senior people, people who've been working for a long time and they always say, you know, I'm, I'm really happy working at home. I know what I'm doing. It's great. But when you're young, you don't know oh. what you're doing. And no. I don't know about you, but I learned so much from just sitting next to a line manager. Absolutely. hearing how they talked interacted mm-hmm. you know approached people and I, and I and I just I just hope that that people remember to include younger yeah. people you know to make sure they invest the time the training and, and things like that that's a really big deal and we found that the people that want to go back into the office are the younger generation because for them work is their social as well you know work is the social life those chats over the coffee machine uh you know going to the gym with a colleague you know during your working day you know having a drink or two after work you know that's their social as well and so they work hard but they love that sort of yeah they they love that interaction and i think that must be really hard and like you say they need to be involved and listen to other conversations, join in meetings. So for me, it's about making sure that you're including colleagues in in meetings with clients, et cetera. And even if they just listen, you know, and don't really get involved, but just to understand the conversations and what's happening. And hopefully people are, like you say, not excluding um, yeah. because we need to build that younger generation. Um, this year, for the first time, we held a so our summer interns that we take in for a period of ten weeks. They were virtual. Can you imagine doing an internship where you never go into the office and you never meet anyone from the firm? Like, and, and and some of them, some of them, yes, we'd hired face to face before we went in to lockdown, but some we didn't. So we even hired them, but we sent them a laptop and some Aon goodies, and we really worked hard to make it a rich experience so again yeah. you know we have to really think about how we're doing things like that I mean that was a, a huge change for us yeah it's interesting it's also I think if you're if you're young and listening to this you've also got to take some ownership as well of your development and I think even you know like even sending someone like you an email and say hey would you mm-hmm. mind spending five minutes with me on a video call sure. or 
having a quick coffee. You know, I think like it's, it's it, the way to network internally now to to get on yeah. in you know in a company like Aon. Yeah, you've really got to work hard now. You're not just going to bump into someone on in the lift. Sadly not, sadly not. And I think people are more open to that. I'm certainly doing a lot more of that, you know, having virtual coffees with people and catching up and they're saying, oh, how can I do this? Or this is what I'm thinking of? Or how can I do more um, on diversity and inclusion? And and so that's a that's a big part of the role is actually, yeah, rather than just, like you say, bumping into someone or, or we held a lot of events and that's where a lot of those conversations would take place. You know, you'd, uh, you know, they'd be a lunchtime event or an evening event and you'd meet so many new people and build your network. You have to be quite intentional about it now. And yeah. I think, you know, even, yeah, even, you know, talk to your boss about, uh, or talk to others and say, could I join in that meeting, please? You know, how's that going with that client? And, you know, can you, can you bring me up to speed on it? Or could I listen in on that meeting or whatever it may be? But I think you've yeah. got to sort of take the initiative and ask the question. Yeah, definitely. And if you're not comfortable with it, again, hopefully you're in a firm which which creates the environment where you're able to, you know, because yes. it's sometimes quite hard to to message someone that's more senior to say, hey, grab a coffee, ask for help. It's, it's a hard thing to do. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, it really is. And I think if you're more introvert, you know, if you're that sort of type, maybe you'd, you'd struggle a little bit with it. But um, you know, maybe drop them and drop them an email and and yeah. and ask. Um, yeah. I think that's all you can do. Definitely. We talked. You talked a bit about mental health and and the yeah. help you give people, which which I think is great. And and obviously we've been talking about that for a long time now. And there's some great work yeah. to be done. I think what I find really interesting, and I hope it comes out of it, is is actually our physical health, because it's it's not okay. It's not been okay to go up to a colleague and say you know i think you need to lose a little bit of weight or you know so, something of that or, or you know i saw you had for lunch today mm, you know whereas whereas it's, it's, it's you know you wouldn't do that right like you just wouldn't do it um but you would go up to someone and say you know are you feeling okay or i saw your video is off you know is there anything going on can i help you you know so the mental health side yeah but then you know what we've seen from covid is um, you know, I think it's I know high ninety percent of the people in intensive care have had high BMI, um, mm. obesity, diabetes. Mm. So, so, so your and and again, physical and mental health is completely linked. I'd love to see Definitely. it be okay to speak about physical health going forward. <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> it, that is a tough one, but also, I think what you what you've got to look for is is changes in people so you talked about drinking or or eating more and I think if you see a shift I'm not sure you could just go hey you, you know you've put a bit of timber on lately or something I mean you you just oh, actually I've just got goosebumps even thinking about it. no but but it's the shift in someone's behavior that is usually an indication of them struggling yeah. so they might be more quiet than usual they might eat more than usual or eat a lot less so they might suddenly put weight on or lose it or they may be drinking more and that usually is a sign that people are struggling so I'm a mental health first aid and that's part of the training is to spot signs of people struggling but I agree with you the physical health so we have a well one app Aon and it's an app mm -hmm. and it clocks your steps and it it touches on the four areas of well-being you know financial social emotional and physical and the yeah. physical is like so we get step challenges and and people we were better at this at the beginning of lockdown is saying let's have a walking meeting you know yeah. rather than just doing this let's let's yeah. you know and actually a few people said you have to get out during this meeting so put your earphones on your phone let's do it you know there'll be no slides you don't need to take notes let's just have a conversation so I think there's some things that we can do yes and I think one of the areas of well-being is to look after your physical health I mean says me I I am spending too much time doing this and all my ideas of keeping up with my running and meditating and and eating really well it, it's not going as well as it could let <laughs> That's the let's thing, well, you know, because you're right. Let, let's be honest. M more people are going to work more from home, and whether yes. or you know, when 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 all this is kind of blown over, 
you know, people are going to be doing a bit of both, right? You're going to come in yeah. and you're going to work at home. It's great. Yeah. But what I, fi- what I found is, I've, you know, from speaking to friends and colleagues and clients or whatever, and they're always like, oh, you know, um, I'm not eating quite as well. I'm definitely doing less steps. Because yes. the thing about the commute uh-huh. is it gets you up and <laughs> it's nice to move, you know, like you just feel good moving. Um, um, I don't know about you, I just get, I don't know, I'm in a better mind frame when I'm moving around. Yes, so, definitely. And so, even going to get a sandwich or going to get a coffee, it's giving you a 10 minute break from, you know, intense work. And it sometimes yeah. just helps digest your thoughts and think, right, where am I up to with that report or what do I need to do for this? And it just gives you a bit of thinking time. Yeah. Uh, but the steps thing, sometimes, I mean, I actually still wear a Fitbit, which is ridiculous because <laughs> every night I check my steps and I know what a busy day I've had by how few steps I've done. It's just embarrassing. It's so important to program. Mm. Do you know what I, I do? I, 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 um, I put a meeting in my diary, so my exercise, and I regard it as the most important. It's like, like I'm meeting the most important CEO. That's my exercise. You know, it's That's a meeting great. you do not you do not move you do ever. Not move. That's you fantastic. Know? And because I think it's it's so, it's just it's important for so many reasons. You know, and I think yeah. if you diarize stuff like that and you regard it as just the most important meeting of your day, mm-hmm. you stick to it. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know one of our leaders. Day, but... One of our leaders does that, and he blocks out. I think it's ten thirty or ten o'clock or something. And he always thinks mid morning is the best time to go to the gym because it's quiet. But also, you get those early morning meetings out of the way. But literally, it's immovable in his diary, and he he goes out, gets to the gym for half an hour, and you know that is his time. It's sacrosanct. Yeah, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Should we yeah, let's talk a little bit about diversity? Um, right. And you know, obviously, a lot of a lot of diversity initiatives uh, pre lockdown and. All of these things do you think they're i guess at first are they are they were have you found that they're working and they changing the dial and and how have you found it during lockdown sure so so yes lots of diversity initiatives lots of things happening slowly changing the dial i would say some things are more successful than others um i'd say that you know diving has been a massive sort of trigger for firms in our industry to do more and to really enable that conversation and that debate and give practical tools and tips on what firms can do no matter how big or small they are. So I think that's been fantastic. We've had really open conversations as part of diving. So it's great that we're, you know, in the sixth year and it's uh, such a fantastic success. But some diversity initiatives are better than others. we we have to i mean for example let me you know yeah. let's take uh women in leadership it's very difficult to move the dial it takes time you know we have to sort of build the pipeline people have to leave to create yeah. a role you know we've got to have diverse panels obviously the right person for the job which as long as you've got a di- diverse panel, whoever is the right person for the job is the right person. You're never going to just promote someone because of their gender or the color of their skin or whatever it is. But it takes time. But some of the programs that we've got are seeing the, you know, we're really increasing the pipeline of women coming through, which is fantastic. So some are more successful. Also, where we've been more successful is really targeted programs, particularly at the early careers level. So we had what we called our BAME Future Leaders program, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, bringing people into our graduate program and really targeting uh, the BAME community. How could we advertise the insurance industry and sector, but also yeah. help people succeed? And it's it's to that um I talk about equity a lot. We all know what equality is. We treat everybody the same, okay, exactly the same. Equity is giving people more support where they might need it, you know, and equity is really, you know, just looking for where people need additional support to bring them up. And our BAME Future Leaders Programme was part of that. We brought some amazing uh, graduates in 
from all around the country for a two-day workshop, helping them understand our industry, helping them understand how the city works, um, you know, giving them real great tools, insight, doing some workshopping, you know, working together, working on projects, helping them understand what an assessment center is and how that works. If you think, if you're from a lower socioeconomic background or where your parents have never worked in, a, in an office environment maybe, you don't know how to act, how to behave, you've got no role models. So it was that sort of, and it's been a fantastic success. We've seen the ethnicity of our early careers hires really ramp up. So across apprentices, um, interns, and our graduate population, in, 29%, in 20, 2019, 38% were from black and Asian and ethnic minority communities, which is fantastic. Brilliant. This year, it was 33% because we had to scale down our, you know why, of our, you know, of our intakes, but still 33%. So a whole third, which is great. They're 50-50 on gender. So that's great. So changing the dial sometimes when you're really targeted yeah. really works. Um, but changing mindsets and behaviors and changing hearts and minds, I think actually Lewis is, is more difficult and takes more time. Yeah, definitely. Is there anything you've had to do differently now since the pandemic, given that things yeah. are on video, um, you know, cause I know there was a lot of, you know, we were talking about blind CVs and, and things like this to, yeah. to try and reduce bias, but now, you know, vid video is an interesting one. You know, we talked about people not wanting to show where they were living. Mm, mm. You know, if you're interviewing now from your bedroom. Yes. Uh, you know. Yes. Yeah, exactly. A bit more, a bit more difficult. We've, we have used video assessments for quite a while uh, initially to screen. Um, but, uh, but we've been doing some really tactical things, um, but not so much changing during lockdown. It's been like a, 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 a a change. I think yeah. the biggest change during COVID has actually been recognizing the disproportionate impact of COVID on race and ethnicity and people from uh, different backgrounds and yeah. black and Asian communities being really more adversely impacted. Yes. So we, we've, you know, and since that tragic death of George Floyd, um, I think, and also just a little bit about what we were talking about earlier. The whole, everyone feeling a bit more, um, you know, empathetic, empathetic and um, being a bit more thoughtful and, you know, being a bit more emotional maybe and just thinking about other people's struggles. And then the the George Floyd incident and the, the ramifications and the racial injustice and the protests have really made people stop in their tracks. But yeah. I think if that had happened without covid i'm not sure it would have had the same impact i think we felt so much more emotionally charged you know community focused uh, more maybe emotionally intelligent just thinking of others and then when that happened it had such a it had a much bigger impact for me on all of us and everybody and so on diversity and inclusion, it's had a phenomenal impact and it's made people really, every single person, really consider and and look inside themselves and think, yeah. well, am I racist? Could I be? And then, of course, everyone says, well, of course I'm not. But then they think, but have I shown that? Have I done enough? Have I stepped up? Have I intervened? Have I been visible? Have I spoken up? Am I talking? talking to my black colleague, you know, do I understand how it feels like to be black? So I think that COVID has enabled us to do things differently. And I've talked about being busy. All of the people that I know that work in DNI have said that they have, you know, been so busy during this time because there's an appetite yeah. to do so much more, to understand so much more. You know, people are asking, what can I do? What can I do? How can I help? This is what I do. Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we, you know, it, which is I think fantastic. It's a dream. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's given us a massive window of opportunity. And we would, it would be so sad if in six months time, things go back to how they were. And we haven't really taken the opportunity to address, to lead, to drive, to to listen.
yeah I, I think you're right i mean sometimes with these things it's it's timing you know like a a moment in time is perfect yeah. to make a real change in society yes. and, and that's why i always find it a little bit um odd or, or sad i don't know what the right word is when people try and make a business case for diversity when really it's it's just good for society right it's just yeah. fair i mean you want yeah. people to have an yeah. equal opportunity to to make something of themselves so you're right i think it all you know it was people who were, people were locked down some 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 really mm. bad events happened and it yeah. it just culminated in, in in just a big desire globally to you know to make a change which i think was yeah. great um and and the, the one thing i really hope that doesn't happen um and and you you've kind of seen it a little bit where you know some people are talking about so you've got black lives matter then people say well hold on all lives matter and then you feel like there's some you know there's some backlash towards um the diversity initiatives and stuff that are going on and i think we need to work really hard to make sure that that doesn't happen and ev everyone feels included you know Absolutely. You, you don't want it to be you don't want a great cause to be undermined by by those things no and sadly you know <laughs> Social media, there's some great things, but also that you know, there's also can be a real groundswell of opinion that is not helpful at times like these. And of course, all lives matter. Of course they do. But right now and after the events with George Floyd, you know, we recognize that the black community needed so much more support and help. And and that we need to, we really need to come together. You know, and actually, it's okay, you know, white people saying, well, all lives matter. Well, of course they do. You know, and it's like talking about, it's talking about white privilege, you know, and people say, well, I really struggled. You know, I had a tough time. What do you mean white, white privilege? Um, but, you know, it's not that, I mean, it, what we're seeing on the news and in events and, uh, you know, even in the UK, some of the things that we see and hear, it's not that all lives don't matter, it's that we, we seem to think that black lives matter less, um, you know, by the way that we're, they're being treated in the US, but also, you know, we can see um, the same things happening, you know, on a lesser scale, the stop and stir search, all of those things that happen in the UK as well. Yeah. So we need to, we need to just put ourselves in someone else's shoes to understand that, that you know, white people are very lucky in that. I'm not saying that white people have never struggled. Of course, we all have our struggles, every single person. But the color of our skin doesn't add to those struggles. And yeah. that's all white privilege is. We're not getting judged each time we step outside our house. We're not having to worry about, you know, how we how we come across, how we look, um, you know, not, not being judged um, at all. And so we, we don't face that. Um, you know, everyone has some pain, everyone has some struggle, but we need to recognise when people are being adversely affected. Definitely. And to your, to your earlier point, with all the things going on, it's nice just to take a breath and appreciate, you know, the challenges that others are going through. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think people are doing that and, you know, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Which is I, Yeah, I, I think we are. And the fact that we're having these conversations and are being really open, you know, we held um, straight after all those incidents, we held some listening sessions with our leaders, with our multicultural network. And I know that lots of other firms across uh, the industry, you know, were doing the same. But that had such a huge impact. Just listening to the stories, to the everyday, to the day-to-day -day life. And I'd encourage anyone who hasn't really thought about it just to listen to some of those stories. Put yourself in someone else's shoes, um, you know, and just think about actually, um, yeah, what some people have to go through and how we can support them. And, and that anti-racist thing, you know, be more proactive. Yeah. Don't just it's it's not enough just to say, well, I'm not racist or sexist or homophobic, but actually, you know, or ableist, are we all doing something to yeah. to to raise awareness and speak out? And sometimes it's difficult to speak out, but when you hear something or see something that's inappropriate, we have to do that. And I think that these times give us license to speak up and speak out. Absolutely. 
definitely and storytelling is such a powerful way to communicate now right i mean it's yeah. happening in or if, with everything and i think even even sharing because you know the good side of technology the good side of social media is you can share stuff and yeah. if you and if you see someone's story that's worth sharing i mean you know show the love and share right i mean Absolutely. you know that, and, you, and you can you can certainly you can certainly do your part even in in that small way yeah definitely and dive in is a big part of that obviously it's a big yeah. storytelling so you know and it's really accelerated the conversation and i definitely think that personal stories in, you know personal impacts are just the way that we can open our minds to difference and understand what it means to be different and the challenges that it faces, and, and understand what we can all do you know and become allies and and just have more awareness we're going to need all those skills going forward when you think about you know and our workplaces are better they're richer for it you know having all those um you know that rich diversity of experience and diversity of thought is is just brilliant but we need to improve our own cultural competence to to really take advantage and value those differences definitely and i think you know if there's a cla if there's a silver lining amongst the the covid cloud it's that i'm seeing so many companies now open to hiring from a much wider geographical scope yes. which of course imp improves diversity right i mean you don't have to hire someone in london you can hire no. someone anywhere i mean they're going to be working from home probably anyway so you know i really hope our zoom calls uh other face-to-face -face meetings are going to just be full of diverse people from different countries backgrounds colors religions whatever it is Would but you know i think i think that's a wonderful thing and yeah. um a real opportunity definitely yeah. well what a beautiful place to end catherine thank, thank you. you so much for joining no me it's been um, great to be with you today thank you really appreciate it and i look forward to hopefully seeing you face to face one day yeah that'd be nice <laughs> in real life yeah, yeah. <laughs> you so get much. a coffee all right great stuff. Thanks, thank Lewis. you bye yeah bye bye